We're talking to the gift of the givers. We've got Imtiaz Suleiman here in studio with us talking about the unbelievable work that this NGO does here in South Africa. We spoke about Bosnia just before the break and, and uh, this, this world, uh, world first um, um, hospital that you created, and which is absolutely incredible. But then came the tsunami in 2004. And that, I don't think anybody, anybody in their right minds could prepare themselves for something like that. What was that like for you? That was huge. In fact, I was in Cape Town on holiday. It was the 26th of December, and a local media station called me to say, did you see the tsunami? To be honest with you, that's the first time I heard a word like that. You know, yeah. the, the I think all of us. I wonder, what, what is this guy talking about? Tsunami, yeah. what is tsunami? And then at, where I was, there was no TV, and there was no news, there was no telephone lines and nothing. And I needed to get to somebody's house to see the pictures. When I saw the pictures, it was horrific. Yeah. And I said, we need to respond right now. The holiday stopped. I took, took out my phones, family phones, the kids' phones, every cell phone. I said, we're going to move into action. That was 26 December two, uh, 2004. Within 48 hours, we had a team inside Sri Lanka. You know, the teams are on the way. We made contact with the Sri Lankan president. We were the first team in the world wow. there in Sri Lanka. Wow. We met the president, and she said something very strange. Because India said, look, we don't need any help. The rest of the world went to Thailand because it's a holiday resort for most of the rich of the world. Yeah. And Indonesia is the factory for most of the, of the European countries and the Western countries. So a lot of interest was in Indonesia and Thailand. But Sri Lanka, nobody was very interested. And the president said, we don't know how to respond to a thing like this. We found partners on the ground. In 48 hours, you know, we were delivering aid already inside Sri Lanka. And, you know, local companies partnered us. And of course, we started, at that stage still, we didn't have, you know, search and rescue teams and it was still the evolution of the organization. Yeah. Our initial phase, just rebuild hospital in 1993. But after that, it was blankets, clothes, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It wasn't a search and rescue teams and medical teams as such. It was after, the, it was part of the tsunami that the, the medical teams evolved because we got involved in two places. One, we sent a non-medical team to Sri Lanka, but they didn't need medical teams. They just wanted help with tents and houses. We were the first agency in the world to be, to be given land by the Sri Lankan president to set up a housing village. And we were the first agency in the world that actually set up a housing village after the tsunami in Sri Lanka. Amazing. And, finished. and at the same time, we responded to Africa. I mean, if Africans don't respond to Africa, don't expect other people to respond Absolutely. to Africa. And yeah. that was in Puntla, in, in Hafun, in the northeast of Somalia. Yeah. And strangely enough, the effect was felt right up to Cape Town. Yeah. The waves were all affected in Cape Town, in Kenya, in Mombasa, all over. And there the water came in, in Hafun. It destroyed many of the houses, and 2,000 people were affected. The tragedy was their livelihood is dependent on boats yeah. and fishing. The guy who fixed his boats, he died. Oh. And they had no alternative means of income, and nobody else to repair their boats. Yeah. We went in, we had to fly in an illusion. We landed in Uganda because an illusion can't land in Bosaso. The runway is too short. We moved everything from the plane in the illusion into an Antonov. We changed planes. In an Antonov, you can't sit in a cargo hole. You have to sit in front because there's no oxygen control. So 12, 15 of us sat in the front with the pilot, in the cockpit, yeah. under the pilot, behind him, above him, sure. to get to the destination. When we landed, we then had to move 400 kilometers by, by truck. We reached a point, it took 16 hours. You cross the sea, you wait for the tide to go back. You go to the area, you deliver the people, and that's the first time we took in the medical team. That was a tsunami. It's logistics, it's speed of reaction, and, and it's determination to get what has to be done. That's unbelievable. How, how many, I, have to take, I have to take another break. How, how many people are in the gift of the givers? Well, the volunteers are, you know, there's, there's just unlimited. For, yeah. But the, the, the working organization itself, full-time, because we have four offices in South Africa, are 60 full-time people. 60 full-time. But it's not a bunch of people because we have warehouses, we have truck drivers, we have projects, we have feeding schemes. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of work that 60 people do. Yeah. And people are generous. Oh, generous. Why do you think we're so big? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's South Africans mostly donating? 100%. Well, that makes me even more proud. I wanted to talk to you about Haiti, but we're running out of time. I'm dropping cables and cords and things because I'm, I'm, I'm getting too excited to be talking to you because I, I just think that Gift of the Givers is, is one of those organizations here in South Africa that we have to be so proud of. All the details have been at the bottom of the screen. That's who you can contact to donate. Keep donating South Africa. You heard from Intias. It's been amazing. Uh, let's take another quick break.